Okay, grade tens, we are answering a second question. This one is from November 2018, paper one, question five. You can find it on the past paper app. Okay, let's read and analyze. It says the graph, the diagram here, here's the diagram, shows the graph of f of x, which is ax squared plus q. Before we even look at the diagram, we know that this is a parabola because our x value is squared. Okay, so parabola. We also know that this q value tells us whether it shifted up or down. Okay, and it's also in grade 10, the y-intercept. Then we've got f of, oh, sorry, this one here was supposed to be, I have labeled it wrong. This one is supposed to be g of x, my bad. g of x, and this one here is f of x, which is mx plus c. Just looking at this, we know that this is a straight line. Okay, gradient y-intercept. It says R and S are the x-intercepts of G. Let's go look at the graph. There's it. R, S are the x-intercepts. They gave us S. And there it is. Okay. And T, which is 0 and 8, is the y-intercept. There it is. Automatically, before I even go to the questions, let's fill in. I know that this 8 over here is going to be the 8 over here of our q value because we know that the y-intercept and turning point in gradient is the same value it's this q value okay it then says graph f passes through point r and point t okay we see that okay so it shares the same x-intercept and the y-intercept oh look at that if it passes through there isn't the c value over here also eight Let's answer the first question. It says, write down the range of G. Now, what do we know is the range? We know it's all the possible Y values that it could be. So let's look at this graph over here. What is the lowest value that this graph can go to? Do you agree with me that because of these arrows, it continues all the way down to negative infinity? So let's write down our answer, 5.1. Y is an element of? Lowest value it can go to, negative infinity. Highest value that this graph can go to, can you see G? We're only concerned with G. It's 8. 8 is included. You know what actually really helps us is if we un highlight our graphs. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to label or highlight G of X in green. Okay, and I'm going to highlight f of x, let's mark it again open, another color, here we go, f of x in this box, okay, just so that it makes it easier for us, here we go, lowest, let's answer this one again, range, lowest value it can go to negative infinity, highest possible value it can go to is 8. That's why we write it like this. Or for the people who are familiar with inequalities, you could have written it down like this. Both of them are perfectly acceptable. Okay. Second question. Write down the x coordinate of r. Okay. Remember they told us that r and s are x intercepts. So r is over here. If s is 2, what do you think the r value is going to be? Remember, this y axis is basically our equation of our asymptote, uh, not asymptote, equation of our axis of symmetry. Meaning that this half of the graph that I have here has to be symmetrical to this half of the graph. Okay. That gives us a clue that tells us that if this is 2 and 0, this idea is going to be negative 2 and 0. Okay, what I did here, this easy way, only works nicely for our grade 10 graphs. In grade 11, don't forget, I, I mentioned to all of my students who were shifting the graphs left and right. So that might change, your, your understanding of it isn't going to change, but the values might change a little bit. Just be aware of that, you don't have to know it for grade 10. But anyway, that's our coordinate for R. So for 5.2, we can just say x is equal to, it just says once the x coordinate, so x is equal to negative 2. Or we know that R is 2 and 0. Right. Oh, negative 2 and 0. Mistake. Negative 2 and 0. Let's continue. It says calculate the values of A and Q. Didn't we find the value of Q already? We said it was 8. Let's fold that in. 5.3. We're going to say y is equal to ax squared plus 8. Because from there, 
Okay, now we need to figure out what the value of A is. In order to do that, we need a point that it passes through. So we're going to say through, and we've got to pick, pick a point that it passes through. Now we already use the A, so don't use that one again. Use another point. So I'm going to use this point, 2N, 0. 2N, 0. Okay, so 0 equals, remember this is the X coordinate, Y coordinate. So the X must fit in there, the Y must fit in there. So a times 2 squared plus 8. This here is going to give me 2 squared is 4a plus 8. Bring the 8 over. Negative 8 equals 4a. Divide both sides. I'm going to divide and can solve here for you. Divide by 4. A. a is actually equal to negative 2. We calculated it. Once you're done with that, even though this question didn't say write down the equation, I want you to write down the equation for yourself, okay? So we've got now that g of x is actually equal to negative 2x squared plus 8. Just so that in case you need it again later, you've got it. I'm going to highlight it for us in green because this was our green graphs equation. Okay, let's continue. It then says determine the equation of f. Okay, so that means this one over here. Okay, we have this coordinate, we have this coordinate. Remember, we figured out what our c value is. It was 8 because that's the y intercept. We need to now figure out the m value. What do we know about a straight line? What is that m value representing? It's the gradient. What do we know is the formula for gradient? Let's write this down. Gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 for x2 minus x1. This is what we're thinking. Okay. Now we need two coordinate points. Can you see we have two coordinate points that the purple graph passes through? 0 and 8 and negative 2 and 0. So we're going to sub into here. I'm going to say 8 minus 0 over 0 minus minus 2 which gives me 8 over 0 plus 2 is 2, which is 4. My equation of f, this time do you see they asked, determine the equation of f, so you have to write this part, is equal to 4x plus 8. Reminder, where am I getting that 8 from again? It was the y intercept. We wrote it here for ourselves. Okay, let's continue. Remember, if I'm moving too fast for you, I want you to pause in between each time. Write this thing out. Answer it on your own. See that you understand what we're saying. And as I'm talking, make notes for yourself as well. That's going to help you. Write down the ways that I'm doing these things so that when you are studying again, you know what to do. All right? And feel free to pause and go back if there's anything that you didn't understand the first time. Right, 5.5. .5. It says use the graph, so we're definitely using the information over here. It says use the graphs to determine the values of x for which f of x is equal to g of x. Okay, what does this mean? It's saying what are the x values, at what x values is the one graph equal to the other or is the one graph touching the other one? That's what it's saying, the points of intersection. f of x equal to g of x means where are they intersecting. Let's go look at the graph. Where are they intersecting? They even told us earlier that they, um, where is this? No, no, I lied. They didn't tell us. They just told us the points that it passes through. We can see that it's passing through R and T, both of the two values where it's passing. So all you have to do for this question, X is equal to negative 2. And the other one, X is equal to, oh, not 8, 0, because they wanted the X values. Can you see here? Negative 2 zero x values okay next question where f of, no where x times its g of x's y value is less than or equal to zero okay let's scribble this down for ourselves it's asking for where x times g of x is less than or equal to zero what i'm showing you over here you don't have to write down in your question paper we just i mean on your answer sheet we just want the answer okay but now how do we get the answer this is what i like to do because i'm a very visual learner okay this means a x value multiplied by a y value on g of x right 
that gives us when I say less than equal to zero I mean negative or zero okay so we have the two possibilities where we're going to get a negative number it's if I have a multi uh, positive multiplied by a negative that's option one or a negative multiplied by a positive that's option two right so I'm going to quickly sketch my graph for myself sketch one here right this here is talking about the x value and the y value the x value and the y value right let's do option one first it's asking where is x positive so where is x going to be positive oh that smudged that sorry where is x going to be positive x is positive everywhere on this idea forever after okay then it's asking us where is y negative now y negative we are talking about oh, this mark is still open y negative we are talking about this graph so where is y negative it means everything below the x-axis this part here and this part here can you see that okay everything below where my pen is okay we are both of the colors go ahead before we do the both colors intersecting part let's go answer this idea where is x negative x is negative on the side of the x axis all these values are negative and it's asking where is our y value now positive okay y value positive all of these values that part there is positive okay how do I know that? It's all the values above the x-axis because isn't this here zero and this idea is positive y. This idea is basically negative y, like that. Now we're just looking for where are the two colors intersecting with each other. Can you see over here I got pink, then I got nothing, okay? I'm reading from left to right. So all this way here I'd have pink, then nothing, then oh, what's this, green or mint, right? And then from there I got pink and green green it's like a light blue pink and blue happening at the same time okay so that means from this point all the way forever i'm going to have both colors okay let's go find what that number is it is in fact two so that means this value is two so i'm going to write my answer as x greater than equal to oh, no, I'm two okay Let's go to this side over here. Now this is an awesome situation. Let's go see purple. Then we got purple and the blue happening at the same time. Then we got only blue. Then we got nothing. So we wanted with both purple and blue at the same time. And that means it's from here till here. Let's go find that value. That value is negative 2. And this value here is 0. So we're going to write our answer as always. It always follows in that direction. Put the x in the middle because our x is somewhere in between those two numbers negative two zero and there we go all right and that's our two solutions okay next question it says the graph h is obtained when g is reflected along the line y is equal to zero now where let's first understand what this question is saying it's saying that we have a reflection let's analyze this question it says the graph of h so this is a new graph is obtained when g is reflected so we know that there's two types of reflection oh well three types of reflection we learned in grade nine basically transformation geometry grade eight and nine Either it can get reflected along the x-axis okay let's sketch as i'm talking Okay. Right. Either it can get, let me just write this y axis, x axis. This, if this is the y axis, x is equal to zero on this line here. And if this is the x axis, then y is equal to zero over here, right? And then the last axis that you people learned is the line y is equal to x. But you don't have to worry about that part too much, okay? That's great to our work now. So we just focused again with the y axis or the x axis okay if i have a graph over here and i say that it's reflected along the x-axis what's going to happen it's going to look something like this and if this happens can you see all the y values were positive they now become negative so that means my f of x was positive on this side here it becomes when i reflect along the x-axis it becomes negative f of x okay right 
answer this question is saying, let's analyze it again. It says the graph of H is obtained when G is reflected along the line Y is equal to zero. Remember I just said it over here, Y is equal to zero is this line over here, the X axis. So that means I'm reflecting it along the X axis, right? Meaning my whole equation is going to become negative, right? It says write down the equation of H in that form over there. So we had our equation. What was our equation? It was, which one is reflected? G. So G of X was, where did we write it down? Oh, here it is. We wrote it down. I told you we're going to need it later. Negative 2X squared plus 8. So it's negative 2X squared plus 8. It is becoming negative, isn't it? It must have a negative in front of it. Okay, to become this h of x. But we don't want a negative over there, so we're going to divide everywhere by negative, therefore making this part positive and this part negative. So my final answer for h of x is going to be h of x is equal to 2x squared minus, minus 8. And that's my answer for this one. Are we worried about this calculation? No, not at all. We just want to mark this part. And that's how you answer a question like this. I'm going to do another one for you guys.